Could you please explain how malaria affects the body? Okay, well malaria is a, is a uh, protozoa, which is a, a parasite which has just got one cell and it's in, injected into the human being when you're bitten by an infected mosquito. And the, once the parasite gets into your blood, it rapidly moves to the liver where it lives for at least two weeks. And then once it breaks out of the liver, it's then you start to get sick because the parasite invades red cells that circulate in your blood, multiplies inside of those red cells, bursts open those red cells, and then reinvades another red cell. And that cycle continues until either you eventually get cured or you don't get cured. Um, and so you get sick for two reasons. Number one reason is when the parasite uh, destroys red cells, it actually makes you anemic, and it also uh, the toxic products release when the parasite when the red cell breaks open causes fever and makes you feel unwell. And the second way the parasite makes you unwell is it, the uh, parasites infected with malaria can um, uh, hide away in different parts of the body and damage those organs. So for instance they can hide away in the liver and damage your liver or in your brain and make cerebral malaria or in different organs. And, and it, wherever it goes it can actually damage those particular organs and cause specific problems for those organs. Okay, and what impact has malaria had on troops? Malaria's had a major impact on all armies right throughout history. So if you go back to ancient times, the Romans and the Greeks had major problems with malaria. Napoleon had problems with malaria. The British Army had problems with malaria. And more recently, you know, the Australian Army in the Second World War, more troops were actually incapacitated by malaria than were killed by Japanese bullets. So the Australian Army has always had problems with malaria, and particularly in places such as the Solomon Islands, East Timor, uh, Papua New Guinea, uh, um, Afghanistan, all those places are endemic for malaria, so Australian troops need to be protected. Okay, and how does the Army go about protecting the troops? Um, well, they've got a, quite a comprehensive program. They've got the Australian Army Malaria Institute, which is based here in Brisbane, where uh, a number of uh, people who are uh, experts in malaria advise the Australian Defence Force in how to protect their soldiers against malaria. And that involves protecting them from getting bitten by mosquitoes, Provide, uh, also uh, providing advice about which uh, ma malaria tablets the troops should take when they go to a malarious area and then also making sure that if troops do catch malaria that they get appropriately treated. Okay, and what type of drugs are available? Well, uh, there's a, a wide range of drugs that are available for malaria and because of the complexity of the disease and the uh, different sorts of drugs available and each having side effects and also the problem of drug resistance. Deciding which drug to give someone for prevention of malaria is a, a complex issue and is one that has generated a lot of controversy as you'd be aware. Yeah. Um, do you believe that the drug mefloquine has, um, is a useful anti-malaria? I certainly, mefloquine is a controversial drug. There's clearly a small group of people who take it who don't tolerate the drug and it has a number of significant side effects including uh, uh, causing what we call neuropsychiatric side effects which means basically making people uh, behave abnormally and think and disturbing their thinking. It can also uh, interfere with concentration. This occurs in a very small minority of people but in those it does occur and it can cause very disabling side effects. For most of the people however who take mefloquine um, it works very well. Uh, it's a good drug because you only need to take it once a week, so it's not like a drug you have to take every day. And I, for instance, when I'm travelling in Papua New Guinea, take mefloquine as, as preventative treatment for malaria for myself. And apart from occasionally causing some uh, disturbances in sleep the night I take the, the medication, it doesn't cause me any side effects at all. Okay. Um, what are some of the most common? Would you say just Sleep disturbance? Well, yeah, sleep disturbance. So people will commonly, you, because you take the tablet once a week, the night that you take the tablet, people frequently report that they don't sleep quite as well. Okay. Um, are there problems studying the effects of these drugs in military situations? There are big problems, and that I think is one of the really important issues that um, when you're deployed in a military situation, uh, there's a lot of stress involved and a lot of reasons that a lot of things can happen, you know, you're exposed to traumatic circumstances often, you know, there may be people killed or your friends may be injured or whatever, so that creates a lot of stress and that is sometimes a contributor to how people feel and often it can be very difficult to dissect apart what caused the problems that someone experiences. So for instance there was stories about US Marines coming back from the Gulf War and, you know, they were violent against their partners and 
and the reason that it was given, or some of them alleged, was because it was the malaria pills, when in fact probably they'd come back from overseas, they'd been under a lot of stress, maybe they were drinking too much, who knows what, but it was always the malaria pills. And it's very hard as a doctor to sort out what causes it and, and whether it is the malaria pills or isn't, because sometimes those side effects can occur from malaria pills and it's easy to identify them as the most likely cause of it. I mean, another good example is Australian tourists who go over to um, uh, Africa or the developing world and particularly young people will often need to take malaria pills and they'll be doing lots of other things, maybe smoking marijuana or things like that and it might be the marijuana and not the malaria pills that are giving them bad dreams, for example. So it's sometimes really hard to distinguish one thing from the other and that's not to deny these medications can cause side effects but to say there are lots of reasons why people get some of these uh, problems and blaming the malaria pills by themselves is not necessarily the whole story. Okay. Could you give me some exam recent examples of when troops might have experienced side effects? Well, you would be aware that there was some controversy about um, Australian troops that were deployed in East Timor and that there was a trial of uh, use of methylquine in those troops and a number of troops did experience bad side effects. It turned out that the side effects were no more common among those that took that particular animal versus another and there were a couple of people who took the, the uh, a drug who shouldn't have taken it because they had a, a medical reason not to take those drugs anyhow. So, you know, you could argue that, you know, some of the bad effects were actually because they were given the wrong medication, that mefloquine wasn't the drug for them. Okay, and what was the other anti-malarial? The other one that is commonly used by the Australian military is a drug called doxycycline, and it's a, it's a commonly used antibiotic. It's an antibiotic that's commonly used for treatment of of acne and a whole range of other conditions, uh, uh, chest infections. It itself has some side effects. It causes, uh, uh, sometimes causes stomach disturbances. People who uh, take it in tropical climates can get uh, increased sensitivity to the, sin, to the sun, so they sunburn more frequently. It can cause uh, thrush, which is a particular problem in women. It can cause the oral contraceptive pill to fail, and there are a number of other rarer side effects as well. So what I'm saying is whatever choice you take, there are disadvantage to each of those medications. And one particular problem for the military is if they don't take the drug every day, then they could get malaria, as opposed to mefloquine, which you've only got to take once a week. So there's lots of experiences in all the different armies around the world where people on doxycycline are more likely to get m malaria than people on mefloquine because they don't take the tablet every day strictly as is necessary.